So we are going to be playing Eldrazi Tron. And this is like a variation of the list that uh, Top A did. The Invitational. Um, the, the mana base is very similar. A double Blast Zone, one Cavern, four Temples, two Ghost Quarters, the Urza set, and then the Waste. Now I'm on three Waste here instead of two. Um, and I believe they ran a third Ghost Quarter because I just want to have a higher basic land count with the amount of Field of Ruins that are floating around. Um, the four Expedition map... Um, four Matter Reshapers, four Thought Knots, four Karns, and four Smashers, and two Endbringers. Those are all the same. Uh, a lot of the lists are running two Dismembers. I thought that was a little high, so I went to two, uh, just, I mean, three of them, so I only ran two. I'm still a really big fan of Collar, so I did put that in in place of the Dismember. Um, the four chalices, three ballistas was pretty common against the list as, long as, as well as the all is dust. Some lists were running one Ugin, some lists were running two Ugins. I played two. Um, I never drew the card, so I can't really give an honest test of it, but the card that I was really impressed by was Sky Sovereign, so I want to play more of those. Um, in the side here, I've got one Tormods, one Collar, one Cage, one Liquid, um, one Spyglass, one Ensnaring, one Trinisphere, one Sky Sovereign, one Lattice, one Ballista, two Contortions, and three Ley Lines. Now, right now with online meta, it may be correct to be running four Ley Lines, um, and I might want to have some kind of uh, artifact hate in the main. Just because that Hogok uh, Dredgevine deck is just floating around like crazy. It also may be correct to run a Witchbane Orb in the side right now because then I can't be targeted. But we'll test this out and see if it's really as big of a menace. It is just floating all over online. I did play against it a couple... Uh, I played against it like twice last night. So, um... Oh, wait. I'm still in a league with this. That's fine. We're just going to drop from that league. Started off terribly anyway, right? Alright. So let's join this with Eldrazi Tron. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Mono Green Tron still might be the correct choice. The um, so like this deck, I feel like I have a much better game against uh, uh, blue white control because I can just pressure them a little bit more um, than normal. And then, but this deck also folds. Oh, this is an interesting hand. I, we're keeping this because we've got a turn two chalice with double temple, and we've got double all as us. Um, but that Ugin's probably not getting cast for a bit. So, um, but this deck has a much worse game against uh, against humans, and I actually had that happen. And thank you so much for the resubscription, Gorbatron. Three months back at it. That's so sweet, man. Much appreciated. Um, let's go temple and pass it over. like burn okay that's actually not bad this uh, chalice is gonna do a lot of work against them um let's see we're gonna run out a piece there there's a four color snow deck running around now is it good I have yet to go against it Modal got a facelift very recently, actually. I think they launched it with the Horizons uh, update. Just run out another temple. I want to be able to activate that Blast Zone right away, and if they play more one drops into our Blast Zone, that'd be really sweet. I did go against a Grixis uh, a Season Pyromancer deck. It was actually pretty sweet. I was super impressed by it. All right, they've got another uh, Rift Bolt in Suspend. That's fine. We're going to run this out. And let's run out our Matter Reshaper. It's another Karn deck. <laughs> what isn't a Karn deck right now? Yeah, it was just a cosmetic upgrade. They also changed the prizing structure of everything too, which was pretty interesting. 
All right, they're just probably going to be shooting our Matter Reshaper with their Lava Mancer, and that's fine. Um, let's... So, this might not be correct, but I feel like I want to protect our Ugin a bit. I'm going to all his dust their, uh, their Lava Mancer. If they want to shoot our reshaper, that's fine. If they want to shoot us, that's fine too. Yeah, they're gonna shoot us, that's fine. We get to keep our reshaper. Let's swing in. Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy they combined it. It's a bit of a bummer that um, it's a bit of a bummer that the pricing structure got worse as a result. But that's whatever. Like the lows are not as bad anymore, and if you break even, you still break even. But the uh, now, if you now if you like four one or five zero, oh, you don't get as much value. like interesting they like gave us Tron we didn't get anything with it but it's still interesting that they gave us Tron <laughs> Truth. They got double Boris Charm for us, or Boris Charm in his skull crack. That's a bummer. Alrighty. So, we want to take out these dismembers, they're pretty awful. We want to bring in the contortions. Alrighty. All of this is not great either. I'd rather just get like a body and then like things like a trinosphere, but I'd like to fetch up the trinosphere. Let's get the collar, because collar is going to be great. And let's just get another body with ballista. We can fetch up the rest as necessary. Alright, uh, we got a heavy removal hand, but we've got almost Tron, and we've got a collar, so any creature we draw is going to be super awesome, so let's keep this. Yeah, drawing one more creature earlier would have been just fantastic, we would have won, or drawing a car and we would have won that match too, so bit of a bummer, but what can you do? Let's take out the Swift Sphere. Next turn we can form Tron and then Karnlock. I'd say that's pretty good. We got Rift Bolt suspended, so if we actually run out the car and it would die, which is a bit of a bummer. 
Let's go get our mine. So with that being the case, it may be better for us just to uh, run out a thought knot first. Am I playing in Columbus at the end of July? Is that a modern tournament? <laughs> I believe I am. As long as nothing comes up with work or school, I should be good for that. Ooh, they're gonna smash that. I guess we're actually okay with that. Yeah, if it's a modern open, I should be good. I think we were trying to run through the list of stuff earlier and trying to figure out what we wanted. All right, deflecting is not a big deal. If we take skewer, they can't kill our thought knot. So. Let's take the skewer. And then. We can go fetch up Karn now, if we wanted to. And it would be free to live, which is pretty good. This is also another game where uh, the Witchbane Orb may have been really relevant for us. But what we can do is just use it and tick up, that way it can't die. And then we can minus down and they'll be forced to shoot it. Because we can't fetch up the Trinisphere anyhow. And then that way we can hold up the, uh, the contortion. So they can only skull crack and deflecting palmless, which is fine. So we'll minus here. And then we'll go get our lattice and cast a lattice. And we got the game. Karn lock OP. Karn lock OP. They can't stop. We're too strong. I think this is a good enough hand for us to keep here. We're gonna be able to get a turn two matter reshaper into a turn three thought knot, which and thought knot's pretty strong against the burn deck. It's probably one of the best things we got. Your Narset puzzle lock is rude. That's what that is, okay? At least I end the game. You give them like this tiny glimmer of hope where if they still like, you know, if, if they still like draw instant speed removal they'll still keep playing okay like i just go hey we're done here and i think that's much nicer Now, if they had like a searing blaze or something to take out our matter shaper and hit us some more, we might just be dead. Someone did commit to memory Narset me. That was like really sad.
They're just like, I'm gonna draw seven, you get nothing? I was like, okay, I guess we're dead. Searing Blaze? Searing Smash? Okay. It's not good either. So we block the guide, take six down to two. I think two is the same as... Two is gonna be the same as three here, so let's just do that. Get a trigger, we'll put that on the battlefield. Play the caverns on Eldrazi. Hope we take a burn spell from them and they whiff? <laughs> oh, odds of us winning are so low. <laughs> This is not good, folks. Not good. Alright. We still need them to keep bricking. <laughs> We're dead to anything. So, opponent, just don't cast anything. Ow! They casted a spell. Man, that was a strong start. They're good. Oh. Yeah, if you're ever against like a blue-white control player and they've kept you off of your game and they're just like, hey, I'm gonna draw a new seven and you're gonna go down to no cards, is that cool? Um, you, you can see that game. <laughs> Turn two, thought not is good with me. So like this is like my big issue with this Ugin in this deck. I feel like at that much mana, I feel like he needs to make a bigger impact. And he's actually like pretty hard to cast, honestly. Like five mana is not a big deal. Like the old card, we were willing to concede with to that, because if we just get that, we just like we're winning the game, right? We're exiling lands and we're just doing stupid stuff. But this Ugin, it just generates us like great value in it, but it like decreases the cost of all of our cards. But like my teammate Noah is like really big on this card, by the way. He thinks I should be just be on this card. We uh, looks like we're against the uh, the deck. So let's see if this uh, thought knot's gonna be enough to slow them down. All right, they discarded their bridge. <sighs> okay, they got another bridge. Altar, Hogak, and Stitcher. We're gonna have to take that Altar. And then just pass it over to them. Yeah, if it got back to their turn, those, there was a really good chance we would have just died there, to be honest. We still might just die here, but... They hit another bridge. It's really good for them. They have no sack outlet, which is really good for us. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I actually beat this yesterday, which I was really impressed with. I definitely lost game one on the spot. Um, but I was able to stabilize a, a little bit, which was nice. Ooh, they're gonna they're gonna delve into the Hogak. Okay. Hmm. So they have another bridge in hand, Bloodstain, and then one unknown. 
We can run out Smasher or Equip. I think running out the Smasher is the best bet here. Debatably, it might have been correct just to dismember our, our own, like, uh, our own thought knot, but I just don't like that idea. So like, cause that's how we can get rid of the bridge, is we can, if I, we need a creature from our uh, battlefield mm -hmm. to go to the graveyard and the bridges get exiled. So this deck works by, basically it needs some bridge up from below in the grave, in the graveyard, right? Which is whenever a non-token creature is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, it bridges in your graveyard, you get a 2-2 zombie. So mm -hmm. then, what it wants to do is get that in the graveyard, and then it has things like Altar of Dimension to sack its creatures, or Carrion Feeder. It uses the Neonates and then the uh, the Stitchers to put things into its graveyard. So it's like dumping things into its graveyard, putting creatures into play, and then like with Blood Gas or Vengevine through casts. Uh, um, we're gonna have to just take this eight. We could double, I guess we can double block and make them lose both their bridges. And they only get to kill one of our creatures. I guess I'm okay with that. And so then it mills itself with Altar Dementia. So it'll like cast this Hogak. It's, and you have you can only cast this using Delve and Convoke, but you get a bunch of creatures because of the bridge. And then you just uh, exile with Delve the cards that don't matter. Um, and then after that, you mill yourself a bunch, keep getting tokens, recasting your like grave crawlers and getting your venge vines back, and then recasting Hogak, mill yourself some more. So eventually you amass like a giant amount of creatures on the board. And if that's enough, you can just if you can swing and kill them the following turn, um, that's good. But then what will also happen is that they they're gonna get some tokens here. Um, they can also just choose to mill you if they've done enough. That's how my opponent killed me yesterday. They just milled me. So we're just going to equip here. I don't want to swing. They can triple block and get past the dismember. We swing. Yeah, I'm just going to pass. I don't want to give them an extra card. Gas and a bridge. They still need a sack outlet. It's another bridge. All right, if they try to bring a sack outlet into play at all, we're going to have to dismember our thought knots here just to get rid of those two bridges uh, the blood gas trigger does that matter I don't think so not without a sack outlet Not that we could have done anything to stop it anyway, but just trying to think if it mattered to dismember and get rid of the bridges, but it shouldn't.
Really interesting that they swung. They got nothing from that. Just lost a token. Weird. Okay, we're just gonna pass it back. We don't wanna uh, send that Stitcher to the graveyard if possible, because that's gonna let them mill another three. they go to cast an altar or a carrion feeder, we have to kill our thought knot. And then we'll be taking some heavy beats, unfortunately. Right, there's a grave crawler. They can't cast that yet. run out this Ugin. Do we want to do that this turn? They get another Faithless. If we do this, this is not an exile effect, it's just a plus. I think we have to wait one more turn. I don't want to be able to not get rid of our creature in case, so let's wait, wait, wait out one more. There's the altar. I'm just gonna suck. It's like the problem that we're gonna have here is they're still gonna get, uh, they get, so we take out the bridge plan. But they still get to mill, and then they still get to do like the Vengevine stuff. So, like if they wanted to, they can do what? Cast, Gravecrawler, tap down their team, exile two cards from uh, the, the cards from the graveyard, and get Hogak. Oh, they're just choosing to attack us though. Okay, this is this is probably better for us. If we draw like a creature, we can try to stabilize. Double Venge Vine now. So now they're bringing back their blood gas. So if they would have had those bridges in play here, like they would have got like uh, six extra creatures, and then they sack these two and get another two each. So no, they would have got uh, nine creatures. Yeah, six creatures, then four creatures in play. So here they hit the grave crawlers. All right, so what are our outs here? Not even sure, they're casting their Hogak. Giving them back their Venge Vines. And we, we did not draw anything relevant, so I'm gonna press this Concede button. Alrighty. So we actually wanna bring in the Ballista because we wanna be able to uh, zero something down. We wanna bring in our Ley Lines for sure. Um, Chalice on one should still be good, and Chalice on two should. Uh, Chalice on one and then two should lock them out of a good portion of their deck. I'm going to leave the Tormods in the side, but I want to bring in the Cage. I don't think Sky Sovereign, the Ugins, or the Endbringers are relevant here. And I'm fine to uh, trim a Smasher. 
This is modern. Yes, this is modern. So the whole, I mean, the deck is just performing really well. It took eight out of like the top thirty-two spots in the last like uh, event they ran on modern. Um, okay, I'm good with this hand. We get to run out a chalice. We can ballista for zero to take out their bridge. So we'll, we'll see how this plays out. Um, and this is the reason why I think you should be running those rips in the main and having the graveyard hate in the main uh, because it's it, I think it is actually really crucial. Just because people are going to be hype on this deck. Yeah, Karn does stop the altar, which is nice, but that's not till turn four or turn three if we have Tron. So usually they're going off turn one, turn two. I mean, uh, yeah, they, they go off turn two pretty easily. So um, turn three... You saw the, how crazy they got, and then turn four, they pretty much won the game. So, I feel like if we if we didn't interact with them, they would have won, obviously. All right, no blood gas. That's I mean, uh, no uh, bridges. So we're going to chalice on one. And we'll pass this over. So, like, this will stop their Faithless Looting, their Neonates, their Carrion Feeders, their Grave Crawlers. Stops a good portion of their deck. I would imagine, I think they run like the Nature's Claim as well. So like, we're stopping a lot of their interaction. We just gotta get to Karn mana, and then we'll be good. Next turn, we are gonna run out that Ballista on one. So then that way, if uh, they get a bridge, we can do it at instant speed and interact with them. They're trying to cast the grave crawler. They oh no, they have a carrion feeder. They're willing to sacrifice the feeder. Okay. We get their venge vine. They beat us for four. It's pretty good. <sighs> so. We'll pass here. If we can take just another four, we'll take the four because then we can equip Collar and then get some life out of it. We'll stop another attack, block, and shoot. If we need to, we can dismember the Venge Vine. It might be worthwhile to dismember the Venge Vine because we're taking four either way. I guess we can do that. And we'll take the hit from Blood Gas. Alrighty, so what do we want to do here? We can either run out Karn, run out Karn and go fetch a Tormods, shut down their looting plan right now. Or we can threaten it at any time. Or do we just want to equip Ballista, play another Ballista? That seems less, less powerful. <laughs> uh, let's run out the Karn. This will also stop the altar, obviously, like uh, Phoenix Crest pointed out. I think, or was that Gorb? All right, so we can... We don't need to get the Spyglass, because we're stopping that portion. I think Tormod's just the best bet. So let's minus. Do we want to... I think we're good. Worst case scenario here, they're going to be Faithless looting, and that's fine.
I'm going to protect our Karn here. Alright, they're going to play a land. Let's go ahead and hit them now. We can minus, go get a bridge. Mm -mm -mm. We're one mana away from getting the lattice lock. We could go for the, could go for the liquid metal option. I kind of like just protecting Our uh, protecting our Karn seems really solid. And then we'll minus here. And let's grab the liquid metal so we're not being greedy. You like Trinosphere? Yeah, Trinosphere wouldn't have been bad either. Okay, they're conceding. All right. I don't think I want to change anything. I like having <coughs> the Tormods in the side over the uh, Graph Diggers, by the way, because just like you, we saw there, if I cast Karn on turn four with no extra mana, I want to be able to fetch up that Tormods and crack it when I want to, rather than Graph Diggers, which I would have had to wait an extra turn. And then on turn one, Graph Diggers is really good, where um, Tormods is just good, you know, anytime we draw it. And it's going to be, if it's turn one, that's fine, but you can't, you know, you can do either. So as a result, I, I like the Tormods in the side right now. Um, my Mono Green Tron deck actually has like um, four relics in the main, and then I'm playing one Tormod to the side just because I'm uh, I don't feel like losing to this deck. So this hand's got a Chalice on one, but we're on the draw. So I think we have to actually mulligan this, especially if them, they're keeping a seven. All right, this is a little bit better because we've got the dismember, but not by much. Mm -mm -mm. We've got the guaranteed turn two chalice, which is because we have the lands here. The dismember is kind of dead because we don't have a creature of ourselves to kill. Hmm, that was rough. We'd have to, like, we could. That's what I do in the main. Um, I don't think this is. I don't think this is stopping enough. Unfortunately, I think we have to mulligan this. This hand's absolutely amazing, but we have no lands. I was probably being a little too greedy, and we're probably going to lose, but I didn't feel like those hands, even though those were like reasonable hands, I didn't think those hands actually could win us the game um, because we were just going to die to our opponent. It may have just been correct just to keep that, uh, that 6 or that 7, though. But if a deck like this is snap keeping a 7, I think that's a problem. Like, you, you can't keep a hand that's not doing anything until turn four.
obviously that hand of six would have been very good with all these one drops are playing and it wouldn't uh, slow them down enough but here they're gonna cast their grave crawler double trigger vengevine swing with the team and we're probably dead yeah yeah it was probably a little too greedy to ship that away but like i said i i don't think it was correct to keep a hand that wasn't going to interact with our opponent very much so Uh, we've got a turn two chalice, so that's good enough for me to keep. Okay, okay. Going against a free win red deck. Pass, opponent. <laughs> get a threat out because that uh, that shot is getting real scary So we'll run out our Ballista for two, and we'll shoot Chandra for one to stop it from alting, and pass it over. I mean, this is a brand new deck, the, the you know, so we'll see how this actually plays out after some time for people have gotten a chance to acclimate to it. Oh, they're gonna pillage us. How rude. We're gonna take the one here. Chandra. It's pretty good. I'm gonna take the hit this turn because I can add a counter to Ballista and keep it alive or just cast ours and see what happens. 
Chalice, sure. We're at seven. Bridge. That's annoying. Can Ballista for two. You can take out their Chandra. Or give them one more turn. One more turn, it goes to four. We gotta counter up and do the same thing. So yeah, let's just kill it now. And we've just gotta draw something to take out this rabble master. Otherwise they're gonna be hitting us for one every turn. Oh, if we were playing a blue deck, we could have forced it. Yeah, I guess. They got their own card. They're going to minus it. Not good for us, folks. That's a liquid metal coating that's about to drop down. And we can't interact with it? Well, we can't because if we go get Blast Zone, they can just take it out on their turn. We can never take it up. So that's going to be it for this one. Alrighty, I want the Contortions. Chalices are dead. They run their own, obviously. I think I'm going to bring in the Collar. I want to leave one in the side. I'm trying to decide if it's better to have like Ballista in the side or the Sky Sovereign in the side. I think I'd rather have the Sky Sovereign in the main and the, and the Ballista in the side. So let's run this. Alrighty, we'll keep this. Cool, cool. They stole the play from us. How rude. Yeah. Let's see if they blood moon us. <laughs> for not being able to cast Contortion in. All right, if we run out Karn and we tick it up, it's gonna die. We could Karn tick up on our Ballista, force them to waste a removal spell. Karn would still die. I have to swing the entire team at it. Or we can minus, it's gonna die that way as well. Um. Uh, uh, um. No, let's just not cast anything. So, like, I want to be able to uptick on our Sky Sovereign because we can't actually activate it as a result. So, let's just pass. We'll take six. Next turn, we'll play Sky Sovereign, take out their Rabble Master, and then see if we can take over the game from there. Actually good with the ensnaring bridge, I guess. They're reading the boat, because who plays a boat? Another 
Blood Moon is fine. Will Karn uptick on our Sky Sovereign? Equip and pass. Sahili, sure. Got the waist, so that's pretty sweet. We can minus here. Go get our lattice. Karn will take two, go to two. So we'll do that. Karn's gonna take two, go to two. for eight. Take out a land, I suppose. And pass. Okay. We got there. Fetch up a waste if we need to. Definitely going to be taking a hurting. Bridge, sure. Do we want to go? Fe yeah, we can go fetch up a temple and cast Thought Not and map out. And I think that's the better way to go about this. Even though I'm not that excited about it. Because obviously we can go and form Tron, but I think we want to just run out our Thought Knots. They just have lands. Cool. If they want a minus Karn, we'll just use Sky Sovereign to take out their Karn. Alright, they're gonna plus. Still 
gonna use Sky Sovereign to attack the Karn. Shoot it. Pass it over. I'm not gonna shoot it on upkeep, I'm not that worried about that. Not much we can do. It's gonna tick up anyway, so. Okay, he's gonna get a bunch of pluses here. I'm trying to see what the best do we wanna we can't crew our Sky Sovereign anyway. I think we're gonna have to give them the card. So we'll move the blocks, block like this and this. Okay. Do we want to shoot Karn to guarantee they can't down tick? I think that's good. Oh, a Chandra down tick. That's punishing. Uh, Smasher, we can't do anything with. Ah, uh, do we just lose the game because of that block into a Chandra? Oh, that's so disappointing. Okay. Oh, we're also one mana short of uh, We can double counter up on blast zone. I think we have to play Smasher. Oh no! We should have just added two counters on Blast Zone. Then next turn we could have. Oh, they're gonna get a Blood Moon. That's pretty good. Oh, they're just gonna shoot us. Okay, yeah. Mm mm mm. How do we get out of this, folks? How do we get out of this? Get out of this? Is that what we're saying? I think we're dead. So that all is dust will kind of keep us in the game. We're effectively at one. All is thus. Good magic card. You hear that, Noah? Oh, we would rip that too. Oh, 
They got another random map off the top. Uh, we're not doing so hot, folks. Getting wrecked. Yeah, that's how it's always been with this deck. You're, you're always kind of like working on things. Um, what I, I think we would have been fine if I chose the proper line of not running out the creature and instead just taking up the blast zone. Even though our opponent had the option to take it out, you can see there that they didn't, or they would have been forced to take that out. And if they did that, we would have got Tron. Um, I mean, we did get stuck behind a prison style deck. There's not much we can do about that. I mean, they definitely blood mooned us and they uh, hit us with the hit us with the ensnaring bridge, which did a ton of work. And we unfortunately got uh, ooh, Delver deck. I'm in. So we can definitely ballista that for one, which might not be bad. But I'd rather form Tron. Are you are they a good Delver player? Yeah, they're not a good Delver player. So this is fun. We can Thought Knot or we can Ballista them. I think we just want to Ballista them. Because we can take out both their Dovers. Cool. It's game. Alright, I want to bring in the Contortions. I think they're going to be pretty awesome here. I don't think we necessarily need the Collar in this matchup. And we've got to cut one more card. The Matter Reshaper might not really be that relevant. I don't think we're going to be clogging up the board much. So I'm going to cut one of those. Turn two matter into turn three thought. I think that's good. Well, I mean, like, so this deck is doing one of three things, right? Like, Eldrazi Tron has, uh, you're either running out a chalice on turn two for one, 
you're either pressuring out like Thought Knots, Matters, and uh, Reality Smashers on turn two, three, and four. Um, a turn faster than you're supposed to be, if not two turns faster. And then you have the option of forming Tron. So I actually think this deck's pretty solid. I mean, all of our matchups have been really close. And yeah, with but with Eye of Ugin, the deck's just actually busted, right? Like the deck just is, you know, bannable. We can't have that in the format, so you're not going to get Eye of Ugin. Now, Heartless Summoning. <laughs> They're professional now. That Archmage's Charm? Oh, man. See if back to back thought knots are going to be good enough to keep us in this game. Abrade and charm. Charm they can't cast yet, so let's take the abrade. We're really going to need to hit land land here, otherwise, that, uh, that inside tile aberration is just going to take over the game. They did get a land for that op in the Archmage's Charm, which would be pretty good for them. I think we're just going to want to... Uh, uh, uh. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna rip a card out of their hand. <sighs> well, we're going to block this because if it flips next turn, it's going to cause more problems. I would get the Blast Zone. <laughs> Alright. Okay. I'm gonna pay for life and kill this uh, aberration, see if they have a bolt in hand. If I didn't, they'd have a bolt kill us either way, so. I feel like getting rid of the creature is more worthwhile, so. Oh boy. Well, we need to keep a creature on board so we don't just die. In case they cast a spell. Yeah, the format's in a shifting spot right now. This deck actually has been topping a lot of tournaments, though, to its credit. So I think that in itself speaks to where the deck's at. Um, you know, this deck is topping tournaments, is taking down tournaments. And that's why we, I wanted to try it out. Um, the mono green version might still be the deck that I'm going to be on for this weekend. But I wanted to give this deck the, you know, the old college try. 
For all I know, it should be just be on infect. We would really enjoy like a collar, I guess, at this point, even though we took them out. We're just playing Smashers. Yeah, I believe this uh, was in the... I mean, obviously it's a mixture of Standard and Modern, but this was one of the decks that we're placing in the... Well, we got uh, Ballista. Yeah, this is one of the decks that actually took a t um, part of a tournament. with uh, this last weekend. Are we actually just dead from that now too? Yep. Alrighty, so they're a little bit, they're blue-red Delver, not just mono-blue Delver. So let's actually put the reshaper back in. We're gonna put the ballista in. And let's put one collar here and then we'll leave one on the side. Let's take out the Ugin. Maybe the Endbringers as well. They might be a little too slow. <laughs> You're looking forward to the new non-rotating format. I think modern's fine. Like, you know, I, I think modern's just in a position where we're about to get a bunch of new cards injected into the format. People are gonna have some growing pains. We got a new, um, we got a new mulligan happening, and I think that's gonna be really good for the format as well. So there's just a bunch of changes that are happening, and I'm I'm actually excited to see where it takes modern. You know, and that's the case that as you increase card pulls, you, the this Wizards just has to make decisions on how they want to proceed with things. Let's... Do we need that map? I think we do. We may need it for... Um, to take out some insectile aberrations in the sky. Take out this Delver. They're on a one lander, huh? Well, let's run out a map and I'll pass it over. They got a logic knob, but that means they don't have another land. Let's go 
get ourselves a power plant. And I actually want to see what they're working with first. Because I thought they might have a ceremonious. Now our ballista can take out that aberration if we want, or if we want to wait a turn, that's fine too. I mean, to be honest, blue white is one of the best decks right now, right? Like, so if you're talking about wanting to play a slower deck that controls the game, like that's exactly what you can do. We gotta win, boys. Bam, bam, bam. On the scoreboard. Let's see if this hand can work out. We're on the play. We might have a turn two thought not. We're probably gonna have a turn two reality shaper. like we're against mono green. It's not bad though, because we're gonna have turn three thought not before they have anything assembled. actually have Tron. So we're gonna take Ugin. Just want to pressure the board. Leaves us open to O Stone. Nah. We'll go Karn. Should take him off the possibility of using O Stone. Alright, 
we're gonna threaten the coding next turn. That's a Karn. They have to hit our Karn, which lets us kill their Karn. Another Karn's actually fine. They hit Smasher. We kill them. Because they can block Thought Knot and then we still trample over and hit them with reality. Cool. So unless they've got a removal spell, we got it. Cool. All right, so in case you guys are curious, we have absolutely really just nothing in our sideboard for them. <laughs> We're just bringing in cards, honestly. This is great. I guess we'll leave in a collar in case they go on the Thragtus plan anyhow. We get the Spyglass then, which is cool. So we're gonna Karn. We're gonna we're gonna Spyglass and name Karn. Okay. Karn liberated. Ooh, it is. Oh, they're mapping for a blast zone. Okay. Gives us two turns. Sure. 
sure. We're professionals and you just draw it anyway. Sweet. <laughs> oh, we get some play points back. Alrighty. Alright, so I'm gonna close up that video.